I went to my doctor's office, got my blood work that I did, and he had LDL P in 2069. And they said that less than 935 is preferred, and I was at risk. I didn't know what L LDL P is. I just don't know what it is. So I was kind of shocked. And I sat down in the chair in the doctor's office. I was planning to look it over at home, not at the doctor's office. You know, I kind of had to stop and think of what I was doing. And I said, you don't know what this is. So I started researching it on the internet. And I came across this guy who does a keto diet. And when you're in the prolonged diet, uh, prolonged fasting program, you're in keto diet. And I took the blood test in the middle of my prolonged fasting program. So, is it good or bad for me? What does it look like? So I did find this tape and it's a start. This is what happened. I told you about the fat experiment. I actually want to come back to because one of the most powerful slides I have in any presentation I'm going to show you now. And it's really going to drive home a lot of how I understand uh, LDL cholesterol and why it is that I still have the state of uncertainty that I do as far as its risk. So the carotid intima media thickness test is a test along the carotid arteries that are along the side of your neck. And it's supposed to be, effectively, and is used in many studies, as a proxy for atherosclerotic burden. What it's trying to do is measure both the thickness of your intima and your media together. Now, I had been tracking mine every six months starting in uh, July of 2016. Every six months. To my surprise and appreciation, my left carotid artery was slowly regressing not progressing. It should actually be staying the same or going up with my age. That's the normal progression. But yet it was actually going down. My right carotid artery started much higher, started at 600, I want to say around 680, something along those lines, and actually dropped about 150 nanometers while I was on this ketogenic diet. But you remember, I uh, then, after we, we go through all of this, I then go ahead and have the standard American diet experiment. I take my CIMT toward the end of that standard American diet experiment. And I'll say I was speculating there was a chance it might move north, right? Well, sure enough, the left carotid artery jumped up higher than it had ever been before. The right, likewise. In fact, if you add that last line, you can see just what a pronounced difference it is. Following four weeks of a standard American experiment, standard American diet experiment. Uh, I really have to say, for any of you guys who right now are thinking, you know what, I think I'm going to take a break from keto for the holidays. I want this burned into your head. Now, obviously, I can be somewhat jovial about it because I am banking on the regression restarting again, and if in fact that turns out to be true, that'll be some pretty powerful data. There's me making another public hypothesis about my data. We'll see how that turns out. Now, this went from the lowest ever on both sides, both sides, not one side, to the highest ever on both sides, showing just how much of a difference it makes. But this is the part that's gonna bring it home. You see, I already read in the literature several times, one of the contributing factors, not just to atherosclerotic plaque, but in particular to 
be carotid into my media thickness is, as you can see highlighted, a high lipoprotein levels, high lipoprotein levels. Yet, look closely. If we add this last column on LDLC and LDLP, I was averaging 200, LDL, uh, 200 milligrams per deciliter of LDL, 200 or more throughout this period of time. And my LDL particle count was 2,000 or more, both considered well into the 90th percentile of risk. At those levels, my left and right carotid arteries were regressing. So what happened to my LDLC and my LDLP? I'll give you a hint. When I did the standard American diet, as I hypothesized would happen, my LDLC dropped to what it was before I started keto. How much did it drop? Dropped to 130. My LDL particle was what would be considered a much more attractive 1,130. So if you were looking at this chart alone, and you were saying, hey, what's the best thing that I could do to help regress the thickness of my intima? You would come to the conclusion the thing I was doing in the first four rows makes more sense than the thing I did in the last row. That's why this data is so powerful, even though it's only 10 data points so far. I want to do one big thank you to my patrons. I want to emphasize something to all of you. I take no money from any corporate entity in order to maintain... So, um, as you can see, um, my LDL P is not bad. It's at 20,069 or 2,069. And he was getting his body to be cleaning out his arteries while while at that level and that's why I'm on the prolonged fasting program is that whatever drug with my neuropathy in the feet I needed to repair I needed to flow more blood into into that section of the feet and uh, Although it was scary at first, after seeing his video, I got more work to do, but it's a good start. <laughs>